Hi, Grant and gang. Mr. McNichol here. And with me today, I've got my friend Lisa, who is a nurse. And Miss Rennie's class have uh, got some questions for Lisa. Lisa's got your questions. So let's, let's hear her answers to your questions. Here we go. Okay, Lisa, just read us out a question well, and give us your answer. Primary twos, these are all very, very interesting questions, I have to say, and I'm looking forward to answering them for you. Um, so the first question is, what equipment do you use on the heart? Well, we use lots of equipment on the heart. We use a machine called an ECG machine, and that helps tell us how the heart is beating and if it's beating too fast or too slow or just right. We use a blood pressure machine to make sure that our blood pressure is nice and stable. Um, and sometimes the surgeons use um, operating equipment if they're going to operate on the heart. So we use lots of equipment on the heart. Mm. Um, the next question is, what do you need to keep safe? Well, I think you need to be healthy, you need to eat healthy, you need to do a little bit of exercise, you need to get lots and lots of sleep, you need to listen to your mum and dad, um, and they're all very important things to keep safe. Now, Lisa, that, that would keep the children safe. What keeps a nurse safe um, when they're at work? Uh, keeping a nurse safe is um, working quite hard, um, listening to patients, um, uh, wearing uniforms, mm. not just their own clothes, wearing sensible shoes. Mm -hmm. um, Why do you wear a uniform then and not your own clothes? Well, you wear a uniform so that people can identify who you are. Uh -huh. So nurses wear a blue uniform and other people might wear a green uniform mm -hmm. if, they, um, if they're the doctors. Other people might wear a red uniform if they're helping clean up the hospital. Other mm. people might wear a white uniform if they're helping to carry people around the hospital. So you wear a uniform and the colour of the uniform indicates mm. what you do. And you wear a uniform so that you can wash it every day. Ah. You can keep it very, very clean. Um, and then if you get any spills on it, you're not ruining, ruining your own clothes. Mm -hmm. um, and we also wear aprons and we wear gloves and we wear masks. And these are all things that we wear, that we use to keep us safe at work at this moment in time. Just like the children at school sanitise their hands a lot? Absolutely. Okay. I wash my hands Mm -hmm. At least three or four times every hour, wow. I wash my hands in between patients. Um, I um, use alcohol gel after I've washed my hands, um, particularly after I go to the toilet or particularly before I eat something. It's very important mm -hmm. and that keeps me healthy um, at work. Great answer. Okay. Thanks, Lisa. And it says here, where do you work? Well, I work at the Western General mm -hmm. Hospital, and that's a hospital in Edinburgh. And I work with people whose kidneys are not working very well. Mm. And your kidneys are what makes your pee. <laughs> so oh. um, that uh, I make sure that people whose kidneys are a little bit sick I help their kidneys to get better. And some of the children might not be quite sure, why do we need to pee? We need to pee because all of the things that we take into our body um, that are broken down to help us be healthy, um, it's, they are left our body um, uh, in our pee and it gets rid of all the bad stuff that often ah. comes into our body. So we need to drink a lot every day, we mm -hmm. need to keep hydrated, um, and that gives us a healthy kidneys, and that healthy pee, and a healthy brain, and it okay. keeps us, um, gives us good concentration. So keep drinking the water. Keep drinking the water, absolutely. Great advice, Lisa. Thank you. Um, what tools do you use to help with breathing? That's a very good question. We sometimes use masks. Um, to that have oxygen and a little bit of air going through it mm -hmm. and that's very very um, helpful when, for when patients or people are struggling to breathe if they have a, a wee chest infection 
or they have a bad cough. We use a mask with some oxygen. Um, we use inhalers. There might be some children that use inhalers oh, yeah. for their asthma. Mm -hmm. So we use um, inhalers, which are really important for breathing. Um, and we... What else do we use for breathing? We use a little thing, a little probe on the finger, and it's called an oxygen probe. And mm. that is a little thing with a red light on your finger, and you pop it on your finger, and it tells you how well you're breathing and how much oxygen and good air is flowing around your body. So Interesting. Really good. Yeah. How do you take someone's blood samples? Okay, so mm. that's a really good one. So. When you take somebody's blood sample, as you all know, in our arms here, or sometimes down in our wrists, we have these little things called veins. And if you look at your arms, you can, if you both, all of these look at your arms, they look nice, <coughs> and, nice, and, me. nice and blue. Mm. And that's your veins. And when you see those veins, you can often take your blood sample from there. And what we do is, we pump that vein up a little bit by giving it a wee smack so that it makes it nice and juicy or we give it a wee, um, a wee tap to make it nice and juicy and then mm -hmm. we use a very, very, very tiny little needle and we pop the needle in and then we use a little syringe to pull the blood back. It should only be a tiny, tiny, tiny little piece sore and then it's finished and then the blood is gone and that's what we take that's what we use so you shouldn't be frightened if you ever need to get your bloods done because it's only a tiny it's like a little pinch and um, like getting a wee injection for sometimes when you're at the doctor and of course nurses are experts at doing that we are very so. very good and we tend to be very very gentle and sometimes if you are a little bit nervous we can put a wee bit of special cream on your vein where we're going to take the blood uh, and it makes it all <coughs> numb and so you would feel it so if you are getting your blood done maybe it's a good idea to ask for the special cream that makes it nice and numb and then you would feel it uh, the next question is how did nurses and doctors make the covid19 vaccine well first of all it's really important to know that it wasn't just nurses and doctors taking a tiny, tiny little amount, not even a half a cup um, of blood from your sample. Um, but actually, some people donate blood, um, and when they donate blood, um, they can take a full pint of blood off when they donate blood, and it doesn't do you any harm at all. Um, and once you donate blood, that blood can go and help people that are really sick in hospital, sick babies in hospital, and in uh, sick children in hospital. So some of your mums and dads will donate blood, um, and that's a really good thing to do. Um, do you use a vehicle to do your job? I don't use a vehicle. 
felt uh, to do my job, I cycle to work as well because I have to keep my heart healthy mm. or I walk to work, which is great for us. Um, some people in the hospital use ambulances, some people use cars, um, and um, some people use special doctors and nurses cars that you'll see with um, funny stripes on them and funny colours. But I don't use I was just going to ask, Lisa, why would a nurse need to travel around in a vehicle to do their job? Well, um, you get lots of different nurses. It's not just nurses that work in hospital. Mm -hmm. There's nurses that work in your community. There's nurses that will go and visit people in their own homes if they don't want to come into hospital mm -hmm. or they're not well enough to come into hospital. So there's lots of nurses that drive from house to house to house every day. And it's usually maybe people that are a little bit older or people that maybe aren't as fit and as healthy as they once were. Mm. Um, so nurses would use a, um, a car for that. Um, there's other um, nurses that um, travel um, to different hospitals, um, delivering different things, delivering um, blood samples and delivering injections and delivering medicines and things like that. So, their operation and um, that they've all had all their medicines before they had their operation and that they're ready to go and see the surgeon um, and then I might go for my lunch if I'm very lucky um, and then I will come back and maybe the patient has come back from their operation and they're thinking can I get a meal at home and a wee bit groggy and a wee bit sleepy but I have to make sure they're okay and I have to feel comfortable and I have to make sure they're safe and I might have to start home um, to their families so I might have to make sure that they're well enough to go home to their families and that they have all of their medicines and that they're feeling well enough and happy enough to go home so that's also part of my day and then it's time for me to go home so it's a very busy day and it's a very long day but it's a very good day so that's all the questions bring wow. me to um, I hope you have really enjoyed listening to me I'm sure if there's any more questions Mr McNichol will ask me uh, ask me about them. I will. Lisa, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Bye, Simon. Bye.